Introducing Edinburgh Stand Up. First up, we have, all the way from your house, spanks on and ready to roll, it's Kimmy Loughton. When you're ready. <laughs> Hi, guys, I'm your funny person with a vagina this evening. So, basically, a lot of my life, people were telling me that I was funny and that I should be a comedian. And then um, I'd done a course, and the course was pretty shite, in all honesty, but I smashed it anyway and then I was going to take a break and do some writing and then um, got dumped, you know, that old cliche and then I just was like, I'm going to fucking go and do life so I applied to do my first five at Red Raw at the stand and then it just, just all went from there really I just always really enjoyed watching things that were funny and made people laugh and it just kind of resonated with me and I was always a funny fat pal which helped so you know it just kind of made sense to combine all of that. I don't see sex between two people as like this massive big deal I just think that people should just be able to have sex kind of whenever they want with whoever they want it doesn't need to mean anything if you can have people that you have regular sex with then that's extra nice just be whoever you want to be go, whatever, go after whatever you want to look like or act like and just you'll find people. A lot of my pals if you try to tell me that I can't be a feminist and a slag. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't think that that's right. I think what's more liberal than deciding what and who I want to do with my own body. Right, but like, what I'm saying slag, right, I'm not meaning I'm a tent of three bird hanging about beside the hive, you know, waiting for somebody to take me in. There's just a few incidents, a few stories. Uh, you can only really start with the words, you know you're a slag when. <laughs> so, first example, you know you're a slag when. You slept with not one, but two people that have been on Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah. I, was, um, I was up in the club. And this guy approached me and he had a jumper around his neck, right? And he looked me in the eye and he went, I'm going to wear this as a bib. Well, that eat your clunge. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on him though, because I fucking ruined his jumper. <laughs> when it's a bit of an older audience but sometimes the older ones actually like a bit of the dirty chat they do a bit of the shagging they enjoy it <laughs> you're never more comfortable than when you're at the stand if you don't do well at the stand then there's obviously something wrong what you've got to remember is the stand audience are people who they want they want to see comedy they went with the intention to see comedy they want to laugh they want to have a good night so you know you're always just going to feel more comfortable when you're on an actual club than when you're at a pub where people have maybe just went out with the intention to get drunk and went oh there's some comedy let's go see it that's when you worry but when it's a stand you're like i think we're going to be all right guys yeah what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. A lot of people say it takes you about 100 gigs or two years before you even get to a standard that you know you can be comfortable with on stage and Kimmy has done that in uh, I think a shorter time than that. I also think it's much harder for women in this industry, it is a male dominated industry and uh, she comes at it with the right attitude, she's really funny, she's really blunt on stage, uh, yeah and I think that she, the only good things are going to come from her. I've had bits where accidentally you I would get a bit bad stage. Yeah. Or yeah. sometimes the bit you think's funny doesn't get a laugh, but then you're like, oh wait, actually that bit yeah. that I didn't really like, think much of is the kind of yeah. Yeah, like you were saying, Kimmy. Like what, my one of my favorite bits that Kimmy does. I was speaking to her about it, and she said that that actually came from an ad lib this one show. Yeah. yeah. Um, the joke she does about uh, she's like, I'm 24, but I tell people I'm 30. See for 24, I'm alright. See for 30. 
I'm fucking banging. <laughs> Great. Uh, and that came from her. Like she found like found that joke on stage. But uh, that is, yeah. as David said, it's a great moment where like you come off stage and like another comedian's watched it and they'll yeah. just go like, "That was a great ad lib," and you go desperate like, "What, yeah. what was it? What was <laughs> it? Can I have it? Can I use that again? What was it? Tell yeah. me." Well, I had that when uh, uh, there was a a guy from Birmingham in the audience and he said his fiance was from Liverpool, and then I then ad libbed. I was like, "That's that'd be the most horrible, yeah. weird, like dirty talk ever." <laughs> and then I ended up ad libbing like a Birmingham and scouse like, "Oh, that was so sexy, like, I fucking love it." <laughs> And then that got like, and then that was been completely announced since then. Such I'm a like, voice guy. It's since then, found that since, David Callan. <laughs> since then. <laughs> Next up, we have David Callan. Good, good stuff, good stuff. My name's David. I'm going to be your host and compere for this evening. Uh, so the way night's going to work, I'm going to come on. Uh, First started doing comedy with uh, there was a course that ran through the Stand Comedy Club uh, that was that was funded by Virgin Money. So it was like a you know once once a month sort of in the build up about five months before the fringe and and then it culminated in a, a showcase my first ever gig was to about 170 people or something uh, in quite a big venue which was uh which is quite quite nerve-wracking <laughs> but yeah quite i suppose it's quite a good way to to start out it was good at doing impressions i was the one that would do impressions of teachers and, and just sort of try and have a laugh <laughs> probably when sometimes more than i should but yeah, it was never never malicious or anything, I was always just sort of trying to be silly. I mean sometimes get nervous, sometimes don't. It doesn't really it doesn't it isn't really dependent on the venue, it's more usually dependent on, on how I'm how I'm feeling on the day. What do I hope to get from comedy? I don't know, it seems like a good fun career, potentially. That would be, you know, seems like if that was your full time job it would be Something that was that was pretty good. Beats was working in an office for 35 hours a week, so yeah, I guess that would be that'd be what I'd hope to get from it. Uh, so, so what's your name, lady in the front row? Liz. Liz, nice. Is it Liz? Yeah. Liz, like the queen. Good name. Good name. So you're here. You're all, all alone. Were you meant to? I hope you weren't meant to be with people. You just barely know me. So, oh, does anyone want a pal? Who's the guy up the back on his own? <laughs> what's your name? George, George, Liz, George and Liz, like a fucking <laughs> king and queen. There is like the, the proper like Edinburgh accent, right? You don't really hear much about the Edinburgh accent, but it does exist. I was quite surprised when I first came here that the, there was an Edinburgh, like people like Andrew with like the, the, that thing where everything's a question. Well, I'm for Edinburgh, eh? I'm like, I, I don't know, I asked, I, asked, I asked you why. Little known fact, that's actually why the Edinburgh postcode is EH. <laughs> so technically I'm half English, half Scottish, right? Uh, but it means I don't really have an answer, a short answer to the question, where are you from? So I thought, like, I'll, I'll go with, like, I was born and raised down in England. Edinburgh is the only place in Scotland I've ever lived in, right? I thought I'll go, like, half English, half Edinburgh, right? That kind of that sums it up quite well. Nice, nice wee roundup of, of where I'm from, right? And I was rolling with that for quite a while. That's my go-to answer uh, until, like, a couple of months ago when I was out in Glasgow. This guy, Glaswegian guy, did that thing where he heard me speaking and wanted to uh, find out where I was from. But he did that thing that Glaswegians fucking specialise in, which is when they're simultaneously quite friendly but also quite aggressive. <laughs> so, so I was just like standing speaking to my mate at a bar and this big hand came on the shoulder and he pulled me around he went, yeah mate, where are you from? And I was like, oh, I was like, I've got this. I was like, oh, I'm half English, half Edinburgh. Without skipping a beat, he just went, oh, it's just half cunt, half bigger cunt. I was like, okay, cool. Oh, thanks. It's always fun doing these sort of smaller ones at the, the granary room places like that. They're, they're, always, they're always a good laugh when I mean, you get like, even, even sometimes if there's smaller crowds it's, it's always a good show. I'm, I'm enjoying it, I'm having fun doing it. That's uh, For me that's the, the kind of most important thing. David Callan's a particularly brilliant writer. He writes really good jokes and he writes uh, really good routines and I think he's becoming more confident with his intelligence. There's a, there's a there can be a temptation when you start out in comedy to dumb it down for the audience because that's where the cheap laughs are and he's not done that, he deliberately goes for complicated setups and, and, and really intelligent punchlines and I think that that stands him in good stead. You're kind of more about your life and funny things yeah. that happen. In I try and incorporate accents and stuff into it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're a voice guy, that's yeah. nice. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. And finally, oh, Scottish semi-finalist comedian of the year, yeah. Gareth Mutch. Uh, where, where are the ladies? Ladies, make some noise! Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I am not good with you. Oh, terrible, terrible girl. 
I think I think it kind of probably started like when I was like 12. I remember uh, my dad gave me like a leaflet for this like local youth theater, and they were doing a thing called a plane a week, which is where a bunch of kids go, you devise and do like a whole, come up with like the whole play and perform it in like a week. And then that was the first ever sort of performery thing I'd done. And then I fell in love with it, went to college to study acting. But then from that, I just kind of found stand up. I remember my first gig was, I was like 17, so I was still in high school and so. stuff. I can remember the first ever gig I did, uh, like when I was like, maybe till, maybe even to like 14 years old, right? I, I used to just pee the bed every night. That was like my deepest, darkest secret. I didn't want anyone to know about that. And it was like this horrible thing that I just was carrying with me. That I wet the bed until I was like 14 years old. And then when I did my first gig at 17, like I spoke about that and I remember people just like, like laughing and it felt like, kind of like amazing, I'd found this thing, like this way of just like sharing horrifically real stories because I think, to me, that's what I would laugh at and stuff as well. Relationship with my father, uh, probably the funniest, like probably the reason why I am a comedian. Very, 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 very funny man. Uh, always provided me with material. Uh, since like as young as I can remember, he's just been like, a great source uh, for material. I get on with them really well. Um, I mean, we do live with each other, so like we do kind of like clash heads and something every time and again and stuff. And as you know in my set, you know, we get you know, sometimes a bit of a weird relationship. Like I have no idea. I must have turned up to high school on the first day of school. Hi guys, so I'm here looking for the friend zone. <laughs> Can you tell me where the fuck it, down there to the left? Thank you very much, boys. You guys must be the alphas. All right, you are. You are. You enjoy all that pussy, boys. <laughs> if, uh, if anyone needs me, I'll be over here watching Mean Girls. All right. It's a great film, isn't it? It's a great film. You laughed a little bit too hard, which I know you watched it. So, because I didn't know how to write. There was like a whole rush of emotion going through me. I was there like suppressing all that shit down, going, "Oh, dad." Dad, Father, Papa, Papa, don't preach, Daddy. <laughs> fucking hold on, were you, were you, were you, were you about to ask me to 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 buy you <laughs> some some Viagra <laughs> so you can fuck my mother? <laughs> Yep, that is exactly what was going on. My dad wanted me to buy him Viagra so he could have some fun with mummy, right? That's what was going on. Has anyone, like, I, I, I didn't know how to react. Has anyone here ever bought Viagra, by the way? Fair enough. Uh, I'll just have to believe you, you bunch of liars, right? Uh, but no, like, at first, I'd never bought Viagra. I'll never, I'd never bought Viagra. Never needed to. Never had sex. Never needed to. <laughs> But like at first as well, I was like, there's no way I'm going to do this, it's all far too weird and creepy. But I thought, you know what, no, this is my dad. My dad, he's my buddy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna leave him hanging. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Happy Gareth Hodge. Cheers. Yeah. It's harder to follow someone that's kind of died and like has had like a really hard gig. So you have to go on and try and like build that kind of trust a bit back up. So if an act does well, you can just kind of write that a little bit. It's kind of, it's easier if an act as well. I'd say storyteller, personal, self-deprecating storyteller. It's all tales of war and like just me, my failure. Hey, Gareth Much has been a friend of mine for a, uh, for a while. I think he's got such an engaging on-stage personality. He's, he's the guy, he's the funny guy in your class. You know, he's very self-deprecating and he plays that incredibly well with the audience. Um, it's his likability. He's a great storyteller and he's got some fun punchlines. I think he's just a really fun comic to watch on stage. Um, and yeah, I've got a lot of time for him. He's great. I don't think comedy should ever be a competition. Yeah. Like I'm of that opinion. Yeah, because like, 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 like it's like it's a keep very saying, unhealthy way to enjoy yeah. a laugh. Did you know that Gareth was messaging me and Rob all the time? He's like, I've got oh, a hold cold. On, no, hold on, hold so on, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know. I don't know this story. I don't know this story. Uh, <laughs> and that was Edinburgh's stand-up. Now everybody can sit down. <laughs>